Hi guys, today we're going to write uh, standard form quadratic equations from their solutions. Okay, so just a reminder, standard form of quadratic equations is uh, y equals a squared, excuse me, ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, ax squared plus bx plus c. The a, b, and c are actual numbers. Okay, the x and y are always in those equations so that you can get from one point to the next. Uh, you know an x value, plug into the equation, you get your y value. Okay. Um, just as a, a little background about why we can go from standard from solutions to standard form, let's go back and talk about do a, a quick example where we solve a standard form equation, okay? So, okay. I just want to bring this down just a little bit so I have some space. All right. Let's look at something like x squared plus 5x plus six equals zero, okay? We want to solve, get the solutions from this quadratic uh, equation. Uh, we would label our A, B, and C, so A, B, and C, okay? And then we would multiply our A times C to get six. We find all our factors of six. We would look at our B value and see which factors add up to that B value. So in this case, it's the two and the three. Since our A is one, we can jump straight into X plus two times X plus three equals zero, okay? And then to find those actual solutions, we would just take each of these two factors and set them equal to zero and solve. So X would be negative two x plus 2 equals 0 become x equals negative 2, and x plus 3 equals 0 would become x equals negative 3, okay? So that's how we solved uh, quadratic equations that were in standard form. To go from the solutions to the... Um, to the standard form equation, um, we're literally going to go backwards. We're going to start with, here we've got x equals uh, 1 and 7, okay, it's, and it's in solution set format, so, all right. So it's in this solution set format, so we're going to take each one of these solutions and set them equal to x individually, so x equals 1, x equals 7, okay? We're going to rearrange both of these equations so that it is a binomial equal to 0. So in this case, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides and get x minus 1 equals 0. Here we'll subtract 7, get x equals, or sorry, x minus 7 equals 0. And then we're going to put those two binomials together in parentheses and say x minus 1 times x minus 7 equals, instead of saying 0, I'm going to call it y, just because we're, we are trying to write an uh, equation eventually. Um, this is the factored form of our equation at this point. So then we're just going to distribute. We're going to do double distribution. We'll get x squared uh, minus 7x, and we'll distribute again. So we get negative x plus 7. And then when we combine all that together, x squared minus 8x plus 7 equals y. Now, usually you'd want y equals, but, you know, equals y, it's going to be equivalent, and this is what we want. That x squared minus 8x plus 7. 
All right. Now, I'm not going to do all of the examples that I have on this paper. If you are one of my algebra students and you're watching this because I have a sub today, then what I need you to do is you try some of these. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I do want you to try the ones I don't go through and you can uh, check me later. OK. Or at the end of the video, I'll come back and, and give just what the final solution, the final equation should be so that you could check yourself to make sure you, you did them correctly. OK. All right. Let's see if we're going to. There we go. <clears throat> All right, if we have something like um, negative 10 and negative 6 is our solution set, same thing, x equals negative 10 becomes x plus 10 equals 0, x equals negative 6 becomes x plus 6 equals 0, okay? And then when we put them together, x plus 10 times x plus 6 equals y. Actually, I'm going to move that. I'm going to rewrite this so that it's y equals x plus 10 and x plus 6. You just put the y equals out front. All right. And then once everything is distributed, we double distribute. We multiply these two binomials together, so x times x, x times 6, 10 times x, 10 times 6. We are going to have uh, x times x, x times 6. We're going to have x squared plus 6x, 10x plus, and, and plus 60, okay? And then when we combine everything, y equals x squared plus 16x plus 60. Okay. Now we've got one. Uh, this next one is a little bit different. On this one, our solution set includes a fraction and a zero. Okay. Um, we haven't had any fractions or anything like that so far, um, we're going to leave them like that. Now, one thing that we have not addressed on the first couple of examples is if there's any kind of stretch or compression. For the moment, on these first examples, we're just looking at them as if there is no um, stretch or compression. With example four here, where we have that fraction, we are going to have a vertical uh, stretch or compression with that because we have that fraction. That means that at some point, our A value is not going to be 1. OK? So let's go ahead and get into this. We're going to have x equals 7 thirds and x equals 0. OK? Now, this one is kind of, this x equals 0 is kind of set. I can't do anything else with it. OK, there's I can't add or subtract anything. I've already got zero on one side, so we're going to leave that one alone for a bit. This X equals seven thirds. We are going to multiply three to both sides so we can get rid of the fraction. You can leave it as a fraction, but it, it would be much less headache if you would get rid of the fraction. So we're going to call it three X equals seven. And then we can subtract 7 from both sides and get 3x minus 7 equals 0. Okay. So now our factors, instead of having two binomial factors, we're going to have one binomial factor and then we're going to have one monomial factor on the outside. So this x here just goes to the outside. And then this binomial, this 3x minus 7, goes inside parentheses. Okay. Forget my y equals. And then we're just going to distribute. So simplify this out. x times 3x, we're going to get 3x squared. x times negative 7, we'll end up with negative 7x. Okay, there is our 
equation for that one. All right. Okay, let's take a look at a few more examples. Let's say we only have one solution, okay? Remember, quadratic equations can have two solutions. Okay, this is an example of two solutions. It can have one solution. And here's an example of one solution. Or it can have no solutions. And of course, we're only talking about real solutions here. Um, but we could have no real solutions. All right. We're going to start this the same way. X equals negative 2. Okay. Move it across so we have X plus 2 equals 0. Now, when we go to do our quadratic, here's where we have to kind of get creative because that right now is a linear equation. Okay. If I try to put that, um, graph that, I'm going to end up with a line. In order to make it quadratic, and the reason that it is, uh, that it just kind of sits on the x-axis as a single solution is that this particular parabola, this particular equation is going to be a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to square that one binomial that I have. Okay, I have to make it a square um, in order to make it a parabola. So with x plus 2 squared, perfect square trinomial, I can use my uh, pattern and say, I'm going to square my first term, multiply my first term and my second term together, and then multiply by 2, so I get 4x, and then square my last, my second term, so I get 4. Okay. All right. Number 6, we have 2... Um, two fractions, which, like the example on number four, for each one, multiply by the denominator to get rid of it. Um, and then you can add or subtract across. Now, in this instance, where it's a negative two-thirds, leave the negative with the two. Um, that way, you don't end up with a negative x. Okay. So if I multiply by three, We're going to get 3x equals negative 2. Here, we're going to multiply by 5. Get 5x equals 3. Okay. So our two binomials are going to end up being 3x plus 2 equals 0. 5x plus 3 equals 0. Sorry, 5x minus 3 equals 0. Okay. Because we have to subtract that 3 across. Okay. When we just when we multiply these two binomials together, we are going to end up with y equals. Okay, we're going to multiply three x times five x, three x times negative three, two times five x, and two times negative three, so that we end up with fifteen x squared minus nineteen x uh, plus. Six. Okay. So, all right. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to do all the examples, but I've pretty much done all but one so far. I will go back and give you the answer for it for that last one um, on the first uh, slide. But now let's address what happens if there is a stretch. If you have whole integer solutions, but there is a vertical stretch or compression, okay? So in that kind of instance, uh, there's going to have to be some kind of descriptor to say that it's going to move um, up or that it, or sorry, not that it moves up, trying to move my screen up. Uh, there's going to be some kind of descriptor that says that it, there's a stretch or a compression. Okay, 
or if there's a reflect reflection. So again, we're going to start it the same way. We're going to start with our solutions. And we're going to have x equals negative 5 will become x plus 5 equals 0. x equals negative 2 becomes x plus 2 equals 0. Okay. When we go to put this in the parentheses and write it in its factored form, before we actually start multiplying things out, this is, while it's still in its factored form, this is where we want to take care of that stretch or compression. So we have a stretch of 2, okay? So this is going to go out front, and the reflection because right now we're only reflecting around the x-axis um, in Algebra 1. Okay, remember, in order to reflect around the x-axis, you have a negative on your a. So, negative. All right. We could, as an option, multiply that negative 2 into the x plus 5. Um, it would only distribute into that first set of parentheses. In my experience, I have a lot of, I've had a lot of uh, students get confused and try to multiply that negative two into both sets of parentheses. So to avoid that confusion, um, what I suggest and what I typically do is I multiply my binomials first and then I distribute the negative two. So if we multiply those binomials out and we do the double distribution for these two binomials okay do my negative two there i'm going to leave my my trinomial in a in parentheses because i still have to distribute that negative two but x plus five times x plus two becomes x squared plus seven x plus ten and this is where we're going to distribute this negative 2. So this negative 2 is going to get multiplied to each of the terms. y equals negative 2x squared plus 7x plus, excuse me, I forgot to distribute my 7. My negative, two, negative 2 times 7 is going to become negative 14. And then um, negative 14x. And then negative 2 times 10 is going to become negative 20. Okay. I apologize about forgetting to distribute that all the way, but, you know, caught our mistake before we were done. And now we have y equals negative 2x squared minus 14x minus 20. Okay. And just to make sure if you did try number 2 on your own, uh, let's go back and make sure you have an answer for that one. All right. So with number two, you would have gotten X plus three equals zero and X minus one equals zero. And when you distribute those together, you would have ended up with Y equals X squared, uh, plus 2x minus 3. All right. Guys, thank you so much. If you are one of my algebra students and you are watching this uh, because I have a sub today, your assignment is on the next page in your packet um, right after the notes. And if you are watching me from somewhere else and you're not one of my algebra students welcome please hit that subscribe button and i will talk to you another time bye